Hello and welcome to Top10List.org where you get a world of knowledge in just 10 simple points. On today's episode, we're going to talk about 10 reasons why America should actually be a lot more like Canada. We're going to begin at number 10 with the bureaucracy. The relationship between the bureaucracy and the politically powerful people in Canada is much healthier. The public servants are there to put high positions to enforce a level of standards and quality control. In the United States, the top deputies are appointed as a part of the thick layer of partisan appointments, and they often preclude the quality controls mentioned for the public servants of Canada. Number nine is health care. USA is known for its top-notch health care facilities, but they are way too expensive. You may just go bankrupt for paying your medical expenses in the United States or end up with debt for the rest of your life. On the other hand, the medical facilities in Canadian states are more affordable. They are adequate and cover all people. Maybe the United States should learn to offer more affordable health care facilities to its citizens, just like Canada does. Number eight is sports. The United States and Canada have somewhat similar sports, but over the years, it has been observed that the United States is not doing enough to ensure its supremacy over others in the field of sports on a worldwide scale. For example, consider ice hockey. The love for this sport, which is a truly competitive international scene, has been declining in the USA. Baseball is seasonal, whereas basketball is more watched than it is actually being played. It's a great game with excellent players, but is still receiving little patronage. On the other hand, Canadians are in love with sports. They even have the CFL, which is the Canadian Football League. They are innovative in rules, which seems more like an evoking freshness versus the traditional United States rules of playing sports. Number seven, one and two dollar coins. Perhaps America wishes to carry on the tradition of pennies simply because it thinks the citizens love the sound of jingling pennies in their pockets. It's perhaps a pretension that you are quite rich even if you are working in a poor people factory. For all the penny lovers, there seems to come good news. Now these pennies can be replaced with one and two dollar coins. They are already present in Canada, which has been more thoughtful since the beginning, and they are seemingly serving the purpose to the hilt. And at number six, it brings us to this, no pennies for Canada. Like many countries that are doing away with pennies, Canada has joined the party. A country may save a lot by letting go of the pennies. Statistics say that America can go richer by $11 million if it does away with pennies. America spends a lot on making pennies and they are something that the citizens do not really need. At number five, we have gun-based violence. Increased cases of gun-based violence in the United States have put some serious question marks on the local safety of the country. Getting guns in the USA is easy, and these days they are becoming tools for freedom, security, power in the country. If you consider Canada, gun-based violence is pretty low there. The procedure for obtaining licenses is a bit more difficult and time-consuming, but you would not be disappointed if going for target shooting or hunting. The gun culture in Canada is better and a lot safer. Number four is the metric system. Metric system is arguably the better system of standards and measurements, but unfortunately America has not yet switched to it. Canada operates in the metric system, and it is high that the USA makes this transition as well. It is a standard system used in armed forces, science, and medicine. Though old habits are tougher to kick, but every country is doing that, so why not the United States? Number three, a more decisive political structure. The pattern of distribution of power to the people holding political and constitutional positions in Canada is such that it imparts a unilateralism to the nature of Canada's political functioning. For example, the Prime Minister here gets his wishes implemented both easily and quickly, whether it is about solving conflicts or taking measures to strengthen a struggling economy. The more decisive government of Canada definitely has an edge. On the other hand, the US President cannot take a decision at his free will without a series of committee meetings. Number two is debt culture. Canadians since long have been known to be great avoiders of debt. They love to buy new gadgets or luxurious items, but they won't do so on the risk of being caught in a debt circle. This is why Canada has a lesser debt ratio, stable mortgages, and banks. On the other hand, the consumer culture of America is entirely different. They go for bigger houses and nicer cars even if they know they will have to go into debt for it. This is why the per capita debt of America is much higher. Number one is freedom. Though America is credited to be the first witness in the concept of freedom, along the course, many issues in this regard have faded America's hold on it. Canada is way ahead now in terms of America when it comes to freedom parameters. These basically include the Press Freedom Index, the Economic Freedom Index, the Democracy Index, and many more. It is easy to operate a business or own property in Canada. Apart from financial freedom, personal freedom indicators also say Canada is a better place to live in. 
Canada is at its 12th position in IHDI, Inequality Adjusted Human Development Index, whereas the USA stands at 23rd place. Thank you so much for joining us on this other episode of Top 10. If you enjoyed it, click subscribe. Don't hesitate to join us again for another episode.